Well, hello, Internet. Well, a whole bunch of you guys asked me to make a video in regards to analyzing the data that we have out there in regards to COVID-19, so I'm doing it. I'm going to show you how to get all of the relevant data. I'm then going to show you how to use and what tools are used by scientific professionals to analyze all this data. I'm also going to show you how to plot all this data, and we're going to answer a whole bunch of your questions. So by the end of this video, just one of the questions you will be able to answer is whether lockdowns help slow the spread of coronavirus. This is an example of a country that did not lock down. This is Sweden's data. The blue line is the number of cases per million. And you can see that it is most definitely going up. Then on the other hand, you have a country that completely locked down, being Bolivia, and you can see that the spread is falling off dramatically. So no politics in this video, just pure data and how to analyze it on your own. You can make your own decisions, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so the very first thing, I always use this, pretty much the same exact libraries. This is everything that I'm importing here, and I'm using something called Jupyter Notebook. If you don't know what that is, Look in the description underneath the video and there's something that says install Windows, install Mac, pick whatever you want and it'll show you how to install all this stuff. I also have tutorials on all these other things, but you don't need it. Everything is on GitHub, so you can go there and any questions that you have, just leave them in the comment section and I'll answer them. So this is everything that I'm importing. I'm not using all of it, but this is just a standard number of imports that I use often in tutorials. So I'm going to use NumPy and Pandas. These are two libraries that allow me to manipulate data. Matplotlib, it allows me to plot things. Stats models allows me to perform all kinds of statistical analysis. Seaborn is another plot, plot library. Plotly, take a guess. Yes, it's another plot library. Cufflinks allows me to go in and connect Pandas to Plotly. Here's a whole bunch of things in regards to getting Plotly to work. Like I said, in the description, there is a GitHub link. It's free, and you can go and just copy and paste all of these lines. Didn't want to waste a lot of time. Request is going to be used to go and get URL data. Beautiful Soup is going to be used to manipulate that URL data. JSON is going to allow me to manipulate JSON data. And then I have more Pandas, which allows me to manipulate data also. So the first thing you probably want to do after you go and copy and paste that, I'm going to explain everything else here in massive detail. So the very first thing that I want to do, well, the, the URL that a lot of you guys have referenced is this guy right here. It's called world o -meter, and you can see right here, world o .info, and this is specific to coronavirus and countries and stuff like that. Well, what I'm going to show you is how to grab this data, this data, and this data. Don't worry, we're going to be working with immense amounts more data as we continue. So this is the most basic grabbing of information or scraping of information. So you're going to call request and get, and I'm just going to pop over here and I'm going to grab this URL right here and paste it directly inside of there. All right, so this is where we're going to be pulling all of our data from. And I'm going to show you another place to get data as well. Then I'm going to get soup, beautiful soup. And what it is allowing me to do is to manipulate this data and grab specific parts of the web page I want to grab information from. And I'm going to get it in a text format and HTML parser just going to convert that HTML into basic text that I can search through. And we could come in here and we could do something like soup.prettyfy. Whoops, it's prettyfy. There we are. And what it did was it grabbed all of that information from that website. Okay. And there is a lot of information here. Now, another thing you can do is you can do things like Go to a web page. So if we wanted to go to this website right here, view, and then go to developer view source. And if you do that, it's going to open up all of that same source information inside of your browser. Now, as you're looking through this data, you're probably going to notice that here is some raw data that you would like to get. And I zoomed in here so you could see it a little bit better. 
All right, so what it's doing here is it's showing you that it is has a day-by-day -day information, and what it's specifically telling you is the number of deaths. So this is 1725. You can see it goes up and up and up and up and up. Now, this is the type of raw data you might want to grab from a web page. And whenever you're looking through this, you may notice that any times there's big blocks of data like this, there is always a script with type text JavaScript. This isn't always going to be true. It's not always going to be this specific tag. It's not always going to be this specific type. It's just based off of this specific data, I notice that every single time I see big blocks of data, that it always has this tag right before it. Well, you can use that to your benefit. So what I'm going to do is go in there and grab that basic data that I wanted. But I did say I was going to grab this information first. So let's go look for that. So why don't I just go and copy this number we have right here and come in here and actually search for that specific number. Well, I can see it shows up here, but this isn't specifically what I want because this is the title. So let's look again. Here we go. Now we're starting to see some things. And if I look here, I can see, yes, this is the number that I want to get. And any other numbers that I want to get? Yes, I want to get this number right here. That's the number of deaths. This is the number of cases. And I also want to get the number of people recovered. So let's say I want to get all of that data. Well, let's look at what divs surround this data. Well, here it is right here. It is main counter dash number, and it is a div. So how do I go and take that and then grab the data that is inside of it? Also, pay attention. There's a span here that has my number. Here is another span that has my other number and another span and nothing inside of there, aside from the spans, is uh, a span. All right, so that's what I want to specifically look for. So let's come in here and let's look for it. So I'm going to say, let's just call this COVID data is equal to soup and find underscore all. And what did I say I'm looking for? Well, I'm looking for a div and it has a class which is equal to, let's go back and look, it is main counter wrap. So let's just go and copy this and see what we get. So we'll go in here, paste that inside of there. Now what I can do, this is so easy. You're going to be amazed when you see it. All right, the very first thing I want to do is coronavirus cases. And if I want to go and get that specific data, I can say COVID underscore data. And I want to get the very first piece of data. I want a text and I want to strip away the, cra the garbage that we have here. And just like that, I got all of the information that I was looking for. So pretty cool stuff. So let's go and grab the other two pieces of data. So what else do we have? Boom, boom. And let's say we want the total number of deaths. And that is going to be the second item. Everything starts at zero, of course. And then we also want to get the recovered. And how many of those people there are? And two. Boom, look how easy that was. Just a little tiny bit of code and I was able to grab all of that basic information from that site. But this is just the beginning. We're gonna get a lot more complicated. Now remember I said anytime I saw text JavaScript that was normally followed with a whole bunch of category data. Well, let's say that I wanna go and see what exactly I can dig up just by using that simple fact. So let's come in and let's start digging around. I'm going to say data is equal to soup dot find all and script and then I'm specifically looking for that's a script tag I'm looking for and then I'm looking for type that's an attribute in the script tag and I'm looking specifically for text followed by JavaScript then what I can do is I can say for content in data, that's all the information I pulled. And let's say I wanna print out all of that content. Now, scraping for data is normally this type of process. And make sure you put this little underline here, I forget that all the time. All right, so what did it do? It went and grabbed every single for instance where it saw text and JavaScript inside of here. And this first part is junk. But then we see, as we scroll through, uh-oh, this is good data that we have inside of here. 
And maybe that's a direction we want to go down, or maybe it isn't. Maybe we'll think of something that's even better than that. And this is the process of scraping. Sometimes things are good, sometimes they're not. Another thing that I noticed as I was looking through here is that there is a table inside of it, and it is called Main Table Countries. And inside of it is all of the current information for all of the daily data for every single country. And here is the main information. So I have the country, total cases, new cases, total deaths, new deaths, total recovered, new recovered, all of this awesome information. And you can see here is for continents even, North America, but there's also country data. So this is where I've decided this table is where I want to pull information from. So let's come back inside of here and see what type of good information I can get out of this. So I'm going to say results is equal to soup.find and I'm specifically looking for an ID. And what is that ID? Well, it is main table countries and I'm looking for today. So let's go paste this inside of there underscore today. Well, what I can do is I can come in and print all of the individual pieces of data. Those are labeled with the TDs. So here's all of the individual pieces of data right here. That's what I want to grab. So I can say content is equal to results dot find all and TD. And then I could say content. And look at this, I have North America and I have all of the individual pieces of data, which I know what they are because I know what the labels for the tables are. All right, so I'm on the right track. Let's see how long it takes me to actually come in here and get this data in a format I can use it. So what I wanna do is I wanna clean all of this data. So I'm gonna call this clean data. And I'm gonna say for data in content, which is each one of those TDs. I want to go and clean away all the extraneous data that's inside of it. So I'm going to say clean data plus equals to data dot text dot strip is a command we can use. And then we can look at what our data looks like after we do that. All right. So now we see that we just have the continent or the country name and then followed with a whole bunch of extra information. Well, one thing that I think I'd like to do is to divide this information up. So, see, some of the numbers have commas inside of them and then it's separating the data with commas. So what can I do? Well, maybe I can separate all of the individual pieces of data instead with this pipe character. All right, good stuff. So now I have the numbers and I have everything separated with these pipes. And maybe I want to get rid of these pluses, though, because that's kind of sloppy and a mess also. So how can I get rid of that? Well, I can say clean data is equal to clean data dot replace. And I'm going to replace all of the pluses with nothing. All right, so let's look at our data. All right, so we don't have those weird pluses in there anymore. So that's a good thing. What else do we have here, though? I have a whole bunch of spaces where there's nothing. What does that mean? That means that they did not enter information in the table for those things. So one way, and I'm gonna show you another way of doing this, one way of just filling in those blank spaces is to come in and say replace, and these are gonna be labeled as NA in the table. Just trust me in the table, they're listed as NA. Instead, I'm gonna put zeros in all those places. And, now we're getting a little bit better. Now if we look at our data, and let's specifically look at North America, which is right here, you can see that we have all of our numbers, all of them are separated, and all of them are filled in with some type of data that we will then be able to work with. All right, so really good stuff. But I wanna now go in and I wanna use something called a regular expression to get even more accurate data that I'll be able to work with. So we can just comment this out because I don't need to look at all that. What I did on that website, they actually had a list of all of the countries that they had in their data. So I just copied and pasted it, threw it on a list. 
Make sure you import this. This is going to allow us to use regular expressions on all of this data. So that's all the countries that are present in their data. So I have those in there. Now what I'd like to do is cycle through all of these countries. And then what I wanna do is I wanna define exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna say, this is a pattern. I'm looking for a country that is then followed by either commas or pipes, those are the pipes I put inside of there, or digits or numbers. And I wanna get as many as there are, but I do not want any letters. So what I'm planning on doing here is coming in and going and getting Asia and it's going to continue on grabbing all of the numbers. But by the time it comes up to say North America right here, it's going to stop. Why is it gonna stop? Because a letter is not a comma, a pipe, or a number, which is what I'm defining there is what I'm looking for. So I'm then gonna say data is equal to, and I'm gonna search for these patterns inside of clean data. And I'm also going to say, because I don't know how capitalization is gonna work with these company or these countries, so I'm gonna say ignore case. I'm then also going to say if data is not none, which means that it there's actually data inside of it. Well, I want to print this data out. So I'm going to say print data and group. And there you can see. Now I have all of the individual countries, all of the individual pieces of data, all separated with these pipes. I can then go and throw all of this data into arrays easily convert all of these into arrays. If you don't know how to do that, leave a comment down below and I'll show you how, but I wanna move on to other things. But you can see that I was able to come in here to this website that had filthy like data just literally all over the place and easily put it into a format where I'll be able to work with it to plot and do numerous other different things. All right, so there's sort of an introduction to web scraping and how you can use regular expressions in combination with beautiful soup and a whole bunch of other different things. And now I wanna show you how you can work with CSV files to really dig in and analyze this data. All right, so another great site for getting data in general is a site called Our World in Data. And it is at ourworldindata.org. And what we're specifically looking for is COVID cases right there. So what I wanted to do is I went in here and I said that I wanted to get all of their CSV files, comma separated value files. If you do that, you get sent to a web page that looks like this. And I specifically downloaded this file right here just by clicking on it. And make sure you put it in the same directory with this file that you're working with here. And you'll be able to go and get that data. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna go OID and I'm gonna call this a data frame because that's what it is. This is a pandas data frame. I'm going to read in this CSV file and I named it exactly what it was named, OID-COVID-data.csv. All right, so that's gonna get us all of our data. Then let's say that I wanna find all of the columns that are inside of there. That would be extremely useful. Boom, all right. So here we go and we have all of this different information. These are the columns for all of our data that's inside of here. So you can see all of the information we're gonna be able to get on all of these different countries. So extremely useful. Let's say that I would like to also be able to go and get, if you actually look at this data in the CSV file, you're gonna see it looks like this, all right? So everything is on an individual day and then they're gonna have the country names just thousands upon, maybe hundreds of thousands of times. And what you wanna do is you wanna get this country, you wanna get a list of countries so that you can work with this data. Otherwise it's completely impossible because there's just thousands of rows. So what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and create an array that's going to have the country names just listed once. So how we can do that, I'm gonna call this country, df is equal to OID underscore df dot location dot unique. All right, that's gonna get me all my country names. And if I wanna see what all the country names are, I can just go and get this, paste it there, control, 
And you can see now I have an array with the individual country names just one time. So that's really good. If I want to see the total number of countries, I can just go size like that. And now I see there's 214 individual countries inside of there. So that's very useful also to know. So let's come in here. Now what I'm going to do is start to test this data and figure out exactly how I can work with it. So I'm going to do something like I'm going to go indexer is equal to OID underscore DF. And what I'm specifically looking for is locations that is going to be equal to United States, just so I can see how I can grab data from this. And then I'm going to go index. And then what I want to do is get data frame location and total cases for the United States using this indexer. So US TC is equal to underscore DF dot location and use my indexer. And I'm specifically looking for date and also total cases. And that comes from the column names that were, that I got previously. I want to say when I did columns, that's where those came from. Another thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get rid of any blank values. They're called NAND values. I want to get rid of those. So I'm going to say USTC dot drop NA. That's going to get rid of any empty areas. I then also want to set my date as an index so that I'll be able to search through that information. So I'm going to say set index and date is a column. Oh, make sure it's date, not data. And in place equal to true goes and makes it permanent. That's what that part means. And let's say that I want to say USTC. And I see I also have this as data. I want that to be date. And then I can go USTC. And I can see that I'm able to go and get all of my cases. There was one case, one case, one case, then it became two. And now you can see how much it is spread. So this is proof that I can go in and I can get United States dates as well as total cases every single day using this CSV file. So I know that I can do really awesome things. Let's see what else I can do. Let's say that I want to plot this data. So I'm going to say figure size is equal to 12 and 6. This is just a large plot. Boom. All right, so look at that. Uh, this is the growing number of new cases or total cases for COVID. And let's say that I would like to also come in and get what is called a moving average, which is just an average using all of the previous growth in the past. And what it's going to do, and let's say that I want to base this based off of months, so 30 days. And it just provides an average of what has happened in the past. And if we're going under that average, that means things are getting better every day. And if we're going over that average, that means things are getting worse versed off of versus previous data. So I'm going to say plot, moving average. And remember, blue was the total cases, and it's also here. And here is the average. So what does this tell us? it tells us that the number of total cases is growing above the average. And you can see how much it's growing uh, over time. See, they, there's the times and these are the number of cases. So that's a bad thing. If these were, if the blue line was under here, that means things are getting better. If things are above it, that means things are getting worse. All right, and that's all moving average really tells us, but it's extremely valuable, obviously. So let's start answering some questions. I have all my country data. I know that I can get it based off of just what I did right here. So let's go and find out if lockdowns work. All right, I'm going to define a function here that is going to go and search for numerous different answers for numerous different questions that we might have. So what it's going to do is it's going to receive a country it's going to receive a column that I am specifically, I want to match up with my date. It's going to say, do I want to plot a moving average? And I'm going to have this be false by default. And then I'm also going to, I know that whenever I do plots and stuff, very often I want to minimize the height of Y. 
This is x, this is y. Sometimes I want to bring y down. So I want to go and have y max be equal to 200, but allow for it to be changed by the user. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do basically exactly the same thing as I did up here whenever I was testing to see if I could get my data or not. So I'm going to go and get this guy right here, this indexer, come back down here, paste it inside of there. So there's indexer. This is all going to stay the same except for this part. I want to study more than just the United States. I wanted to and study every country. So I'm going to go get country and put country in there instead of the United States. And everything else here is exactly the same. What I'm going to do next? Well, I want to go and get data frame location and the column that we're specifically looking for. And this is the column that we are searching for. So I'm going to come back up here again. And guess what? I want to grab this. And I'm also going to grab this. And I'm going to grab this. And is there anything else I want to grab? I'm not going to worry about plotting right now. So I'm just copying what I previously tested and I know that it works. So paste this inside of here. And we're no longer going to call this US. We're going to call this country DF. So country underscore DF because this is not a US centric tutorial. This is going to be concerned the whole world, not just the United States. All right, so there's all that, and I'm replacing all of these as well. Another thing I want to do here is I'm saying that this is the same, but I'm going to have date. I still want to get date data, but I also want to be able to ex get, instead of just total cases, I want to be able to search for any column in our data. Then I'm going to have here, I'm still going to get rid of any empty data. That's what that does. And I'm still going to use date as my index for everything. And that just allows me to plot everything better. What else am I going to do? Well, I want to remove all columns except for the column that I'm looking for. Because sometimes this data goes and gives me more than what I want. I want to make sure I'm just getting what I want. And one way to do that is to go country df dot columns dot difference and put in the column that I'm specifically looking for and then one and then again in place makes it permanent. Without that, it only temporarily changes it. All right. Now let's say that I want to go in here and plot this information. Well, I can say country and df dot plot. I'm going to keep my figure size the same because what I used before looked pretty nice. So I'll do that. Remember, I'm going to allow the user to set their maximum height for y. And that's going to be equal to, I'm going to set the minimum for zero. And the maximum is going to be whatever they passed in or 200, whichever, you know, we're going to use. But actually, I should also check if they want to plot or not. So I'm going to say if plot moving average. This is always going to plot, but do I want to print the moving average or not? All right. And up here, whenever I printed our moving average, this is what we were using. And that's still going to work great. So let's just get it and paste it inside of there. And except this is going to be country now instead of whatever it was, I forget. And uh, TF, and we're still going to use all the other data for monthly and so forth. I could put that as an attribute in here also and plot different, but whatever that works. We're going to have data other than total cases. Everything else is exactly the same, however. And now it's time to answer our question. So what we're going to do, remember our question is, do lockdowns work if you forgot? All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to call this function that I just had. So plot COVID data, this one right here. So just go boink like that. And if we look at a country that did not lock down, that is Sweden. And if we want to find out new cases per million, we can see an example of how Sweden is doing 
right now as I'm making this tutorial. Then underneath of it, we can do, and please don't get me involved in politics. I'm just making a tutorial here. I'm not making any judgments on anybody. All right. <laughs> so Bolivia is a country that went and locked down a lot. So let's see exactly what happens. And if we run it, you saw this before. This is what's going on in Sweden now in regards to new cases per million. And this is what's happening in Bolivia, new cases per million. And you can see that Y is exactly the same and on both of them. All right. So other questions we might ask is how does median age affect death rate? Now you have to understand whenever you're analyzing data, you can't always just say, oh, median age. And uh, based off your results, you can immediately, like let's say that uh, a country that has a median age that's high, they have very, very high results. That does not necessarily mean that the age or the median age is, is directly correlated to the increase in death or the increase in, of new cases or what have you. You have to use this information uh, and, and use it in comparison to each other, all right? So I'm just doing the basic overviews here, but it's going to lead us in the right direction, I think. So let's paste this in here. So let's look at a country that has a median age that is very low, which is Serbia. And let's look at new deaths per million, because that's really what we're concerned with. So deaths, if everybody survived, we wouldn't even care about it. All right, so there we go. We have that and a country that is very old or has a very old median age would be Japan. Let's see how they differ. So here is Serbia and here it up. Oh, you can see everything's really low. So what that means is I need to come in and define my height for my Y. So let's try 2.5 and see if that looks a little bit better. It gives us better results than what we may have saw previously. And it does. Okay, so this is Serbia that has a very low median age. And you can see what's going on there in regards to new cases. And you can see Japan. And look at this. Japan, who has a higher median age, actually is seeing less death per million in comparison to Serbia. Now, does that mean that median age has nothing to do with it? No, it just means specifically, if you compare Serbia to Japan, that these are the results you get. All right, and we can go deeper and deeper. And what I hope you do is you actually go in here and start playing around, because that's the ultimate goal, is to hand you all the tools you need and then allow you to go play. So let's go and answer some more questions, or at least <laughs> create more questions. How does obesity affect death rate? Let's take a look. Actually, for this one, I'm going to use four different situations. And very often, the countries that I'm picking are based off of how reliable I think the data is. It's not necessarily, you know, the absolutes and so forth. So let's go look at the United States as an example of high obesity rates and deaths per million. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And let's go, let's throw Canada in there also. Sorry, Canada, but the obesity rate in Canada is rather high in comparison to other countries. And then let's look at two countries that have very low obesity rates being India. And look at that, Japan made the list again. So let's go and run it. Whoa, this is a mess. So let's increase our Y on this to see how this works out for us. Let's throw like 15 inside of here because it looks like it's pretty dramatic. So 15 and 15 and 15 and 15, boom. All right, so that's much better. So you can see here the deaths versus obesity rates. Obesity rates going up and the, yeah, obesity rates are going up of course here. This of course is deaths per million people on the left. I'm just, I'm answering the obesity information based off of plugging in data from countries that have higher obesity rates and lower obesity rates. And you can see here are results. So you have two countries that have higher obesity rates being the United States and Canada, and then countries that have very low obesity rates. And you can see that they're going under the curve down here with India, while Canada is going above the curve and the United States is sort of bouncing around here, but uh, definitely much higher death rates. 
So if we look even on this average, let's use this sort of average line right here, we're looking above three. Let's come down here. This is a spike. This is around one. And if we look at India, this is under one. And if we look at Japan, it's like flatlining. All right. So you can look into that and make decisions on whatever you think in regards to that data. Another question is, how does diabetes affect uh, deaths per million? So let's take a country again with high diabetes rates, which is the United States. And deaths per million, that's perfectly fine. And let's chalk this up to 15 because that worked well before. So just 15 again. And a country with a surprisingly low diabetes rate is Ireland. I don't know why. So there we are. Plug that in. Run it. And there you can see diabetes rates in the United States versus in Ireland. And you can see the number of deaths was pretty low-ish down here. One. And the United States, again, is in the upper threes approaching fours. Maybe another question is, is how does testing slow the death rate? Because that's a question that has been brought up in the media a lot. So let's go check a country that has on a proportional level a lot of testing, which would be Denmark. And then let's look at a country that has a low amount of testing. And that would be Mexico. Deaths per million based off of the amount of testing. Run it. And look at that, Denmark looks like they're doing pretty good. And Mexico does not look like it's doing pretty good. So in this situation, we would say that providing more testing is going to more than likely lower the overall death rate versus providing less. But mainly what I've been doing here is looking at individual countries. What would happen is if I wanted to come in and look at a whole, all the countries all at once and analyze data in numerous different ways. Well, a scatter plot works really good for that. So I'm going to create a function here that is going to create a scatter plot. It's going to, not only that, it's going to allow you to define a specific date that you want this data pulled from. And scatter plots are going to work with two columns worth of data. So I'm going to go and allow the user to pass me any two columns and I will analyze them for every single country. So this is going to be pretty cool. So what I want to do is this is going total DF is going to represent every single country's data. And this is a data frame. And I'm going to define the columns that I want to work with. And they are going to be date location, which is going to be the country, and then column one, whatever the user defines, and column two, whatever the user defines. I'm then going to cycle through every single country that we have in our country data frame. Remember, we made that. And I want to get country-specific data and append it to this data frame right here. So I'm going to create something called temp df, which is equal to our world in data. DF and how we can grab this data is go our world in data DF and what we're looking for and I can also put conditions inside of here one of the conditions is that the location where I'm pulling the data from is equal to whatever the current country is I can also say and and throw another condition inside of here I want our world in data DF and I want the date to be equal to whatever the date was that we're specifically looking for. And then on top of that, I want to also define, I want the date, the location, and the, whoops, make sure you have quotes around these. And I also want column one data and column two data. So that's all the information I wanna pull. And after I get this temporary thing full of all this data, I want to come in and put it inside of my total data frame that's going to have data on every single country. So df append and temp underscore df. I want to ignore any indexes. Sometimes you have indexes that are the same. I want to just ignore them. All right, that's why I'm doing that. And I want to fill any empty data space with zero. 
All right, good. So I cycled through all that, the, every single country. Now what I want to do is go total TF, and I want to set my index to be equal to the date. Once again, that allows me to plot this information in place is going to make it permanent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Plotly. Plotly is another way for us to plot our data. And I said I want to do a scatter plot. And the data frame where I'm pulling this information is going to be the total data frame that has all the country data in it. X is going to be, this is the X axis, is going to be whatever they wanted column two to be. I am then going to define my Y axis as whatever they wanted column one to be. I'm going to have the colors for all the dots be based off of whatever the country is. So every single country is going to have its own color. Uh, I'm going to do trend line, which is going to do a regression line, which is going to help me with understanding averages that are going on. And uh, let's say that whenever I hover over top of the individual dots, it's going to provide me with location or country information. That's what all those things do. I can then say fig dot show. And also another thing, whoops, another thing that I can do is I can return that total data frame with all that information after the function is done, just in case I want to use it for something else. And now I can call the scatterplot function that I just created. And let's say that I want to get data from yesterday. And what I specifically want to plot is total deaths, whoops, total deaths per million and also I want to get let's see based off of the percentage of people in the country that are 70 or older okay just another thing to look at up here I forgot to put these in quotes now I got them in quotes boom and there you can see is a scatter plot for every single country you can see total deaths per million you can also see based off of the percentage of people in that country that are 70 or over. And you can go and do this with all sorts of other different data. You can see all the individual countries are labeled. You can see all this very specific data. And hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and have some fun with it. As much fun as we can have anyway. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.